Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're looking at automation using X-Rail in DCC-X. Ages ago I made a video about DCC-X, I'll put a link up here so go check that out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But essentially it's a really low cost DCC command station that you can build at home. It's a development of the DCC++ base station that I made a video about years ago, but the DCC-X team have progressed it and continue to progress it, making it even more user friendly and packing in loads more functionality. And some of that extra functionality is automation using the built-in X-Rail, which stands for Extended Rail Railroad Automation Instruction Language. If you want all the information about DCCX and XRail, then visit dcc-x.com. But in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it was to automate Percy and Thomas up here in my G gauge shelf layout. So here's the plan. You might remember that my G gauge layout looks like this. We've got a double track section in the middle where trains can run past each other with return loops at either end. The return loops are connected to the double track section in the middle via stretches of single track. I've set the points up on the double track section so that trains always drive on the left, as is standard for the UK, and these LGB points allow trains to push through them if they're set against them, so I don't need to worry about point motors switching the points. So if we've got Thomas at the back going to the right and Percy at the front pointing to the left, then I'd like to be able to start an automated sequence that sends each loco off around their respective reverse loops, has them pull back into the double track section, stop for a short time, then head off around the other return loop before coming back to where they started. In order for the automated system to know where trains need to stop, we're going to need some sensors. And for this, we're going to use IR sensors. IR stands for infrared. If you've watched my other videos, then you'll probably have seen these before. They've got three pins, one for five volts, one for ground, and the other outputs the digital signal. We've got this potentiometer, which can be adjusted with a screwdriver to change the sensitivity of the detector. And then on top poking out, we've got a five millimeter infrared emitter and a five millimeter infrared receiver. If the infrared light is reflected back off something to the receiver, then the sensor activates. An LED on the sensor comes on to tell us that something's been detected, and that's also fed back down the signal wire. And just to note that black or dark surfaces often don't reflect much light, so it can be very hard to detect. Lighter surfaces are much better, which is why I've put some shiny reflective tape under the locos. So the IR sensors are going to go under the track where we want the locomotives to stop. I've also made these 3D printed semaphore signals that are controlled by servos. I want it to look like the trains are reacting to the signals, although, as you'll see, the X-Rail script will be controlling both the signals and the locos, so the locos won't actually be responding to the signalling. Let's take a look at the hardware and see how all this is wired together. This is the standard DCC-X base station. We've got the Arduino Mega on the bottom, a motor driver shield in the middle which controls the power to the track, and that's got a laptop power supply attached to it. And on top, I've got a Wi-Fi shield, and that lets me connect my phone and control the trains using the engine driver app. These two wires are needed to make my Wi-Fi shield work correctly. They're nothing to do with the automation side of things, so don't worry about those. If you want to know how to put all this together, then the instructions are on the DCCX website, and that's the best resource to look at. Connecting the two sensors is really easy. On the Mega, we've got two five volt pins at this end, two ground pins at this end, and we've got digital input pins in between that we can use. Then to control the servers, we need to add a PCA9685 servo driver board. Again, if you've seen my previous videos, this will be familiar to you. Details on how to connect this up, along with a helpful diagram, are on the DCCX website. We've got a five volts, a ground, an SCL, and an SDA connection. And then because servos can draw quite a lot of current, it's best to use a separate five volt power supply to power those. This power supply also has a USB connection, which is really useful because I can also use it to power the Arduino Mega. Each PCA9685 board can take 16 servos and they plug straight into the board. So I've got my two signals plugged in on set of pins marked zero and one. So that's all the wiring done. How do we automate it? Well, the easiest way is to use the DCCX installer program called X Installer, available from the DCCX website. Connect your base station to the computer, click through the welcome screens, select your device, and choose the DCCX command station as the product you want to install. The screens you're seeing right now might change over time as the team develop the software. You can already see that there are more products on the way, but I would think this process will stay fairly similar. It's also worth noting that this is all free and open source. So again, massive thanks to the DCCX team for volunteering their time and making this happen. 
Then you need to pick your version. I just go with the recommended version and leave configuration options on the next screen ticked. Then we need to select some options. First, pick your motor driver from the drop down. Mine is the standard version. Then I have Wi Fi, so I'm ticking that and I'm going to set my password. Please don't hack my Wi Fi. I want track power to come on immediately when the system starts up. Then we need to tick create myautomation.h and advanced config. These are the options we need in order to do our automation. Click through to the next screen and you'll see config.h on the left and myautomation.h on the right. Ignore config, we want to focus on myautomation.h. This is where we can set up our sequences and automation. Full documentation with examples is on the DCCX website, but I'll talk you through what I did. You can already see there's some code in here. This is what turns the track power on at startup, so we can leave that there. Next, we can create a roster of locomotives. These will then appear in the engine driver app. I'm not going to type the code as I'll probably mess it up, but I'll cut chunks in a bit at a time and then we can run through them. This is the code required to enter a locomotive into the roster. The word roster and then open brackets and inside there we put the DCC address of the loco. So we're adding Percy first and he's on address six. Then we can put a comma and type in the name we want to appear in the engine driver app. So that's Percy. Then we've got another comma and we can add in all the DCC functions that the locomotive has. So Percy is sound fitted, but with very limited functions. There's no lighting on F0, so that's blank. F1 does nothing, so again blank. Then F2 is a whistle. And the asterisk before it means that we don't want it to latch. So you'll have to hold your finger on that function to get it to play. But as soon as you lift your finger off, it'll stop. Same with F3, which is a toot. Then F4 is a blowdown. Nothing on F5, 6 or 7. And then function 8 is mute. Repeat the process for all the other locos in your roster. We're only using Thomas and Percy, but I've added all my G-Gage locos for this. We've got Thomas on address three, my 3D printed shunter on address four, and my LGB stains number two on address number two. These all have loads more functions than Percy because they've got the Econami soundtracks decoders in them, which are more sophisticated than Percy's pre-installed sound decoder. Next, we can define our servos using this code. There are a few ways you can define servos in X-Rail, but the servo signal method automatically assumes that these are servos attached to semaphore signals, and it will add in a little bounce effect on the motion. Obviously not what you want if you were attaching these to points, but there are other ways to add servos for those scenarios. The first number in the brackets is the servo address. 100 corresponds to the pins on position zero on the PCA9685, and 101 is position one on the PCA9685. The next numbers represent the position of the servo arm when it's showing red, amber, and green. You'll need to establish these through trial and error as each signal is likely to be slightly different. Both of my signals show red at position 100. Neither has an amber position, so I've set that to zero. And then they show green at position 145 and 170 respectively. When X-Rail starts up, I believe that it automatically sets signals to red, so you don't need a separate script to do that. Now I want to start crafting my automation and there are probably a few different ways to do this and mine may not be the most elegant, but I'm trying to do this for the first time. Xrail has automations and sequences. As far as I can tell, they're pretty much the same thing except automations appear as things you can select in the engine driver app, whereas sequences are invisible and can't be accessed from the engine driver app. I want my automation to be triggered when I press a button in the app, so I'm going to create an automation. But within that automation, I'm also going to have sequences. Each automation and sequence has a unique number, so my automation is going to be number one, and I'm going to call it Percy and Thomas. Then within the automation, the first line sends the loco on address six, so that's Percy, on sequence number two, which we've not written yet. And then the second line of my automation sends the loco on address three, so that's Thomas, on sequence number three, which again, we still need to write. And then the word done just tells the system that the automation is finished. So now we need to write sequences two and three. But before we do that, I'm gonna split the layout into two sections of track called blocks. This section of track is gonna be called block one, and this section of track is gonna be called block two. This is important because we can allocate these blocks of track to locos in the sequences, and X-Rail is really clever and it won't allocate the same block to more than one locomotive. This is gonna help prevent Thomas and Percy from crashing into each other. And sequences and automations share numbering. We've already used number one for the automation, so we're on to number two for the sequence. This is the sequence for Percy, and the first thing he's gonna do is reserve the blocker track that he wants to drive into. That's block number one. Then I'll put in a random delay of between half and two seconds just to mix the timing up a bit. Then I want Percy's signal to go green. Then we've got another delay of 1.5 seconds. 
then this bit of code F on is turning on function number two, which is Percy's whistle. That stays on for half a second before being turned off by the F off command. Percy's then ready to go, so it's FWD 15, which is setting the direction to forward and the speed step to 15 out of 127. After five seconds, Percy should be well clear of the signal, so at this point the signal is going to go back to red. Now you see what I mean about the loco and the signals both being controlled by the script and not really interacting, but it will look like Percy is obeying the signals if we script it properly. I've dropped in another delay of five seconds here just to give Percy plenty of time to get all his wagons clear of the sensors. The next bit at 22 is saying wait for the sensor on pin 22 to be activated. And then once it's activated, we'll stop Percy. Then there's a random delay of between four and six seconds and I'm imagining that this is time to allow Percy to hand back his token for block one to the signaler. And then block one is freed up using the code free one. Now Percy basically needs to do the same thing but for block two. So the code is the same format but references the other block, sensor and signal. Here Percy tries to reserve block two, but if Thomas hasn't gone back yet and freed up the block, then Percy can't reserve it, so the system will wait. So that's sequence two for Percy, and this is sequence three for Thomas, which is basically the same as sequence two, but in reverse because he's going the other way. Note that Thomas also has different function for his whistle. So once all that is in your myautomation.h file, it's time to press the upload button and we're ready to give it a go. Percy and Thomas are on the track ready to go and I've got the engine driver app open. And there you can see that I've got my four locomotives in my roster. And each of those is controllable and you can see that I've got all the functions available. So let's test out the whistle for Percy. There we go. So next, if I go to the three dots in the top right hand corner of engine driver and select routes, I should see my automation Percy and Thomas there. So let's press set and see what happens. And I'll put the code for each sequence up on the screen so that you can follow along. The signals are down, there's a slight delay and they're both off. So let's have a look at Thomas go through and after the short delay, the signal should return to red and there we go. And it's got that little bounce on it, which is quite nice. And X-Rail automatically puts that in for you because we've used the servo set code. Percy is continuing on down his single track section and um, until they come back to the sensors, the code is now just waiting for them. So Thomas has already hit the return loop because it's a slightly shorter single track section for him. So he'll be the first one to make it back. Percy's only just about halfway around his return loop. And here's Thomas making his way back towards the double track section. And now we're waiting for him to pass over that sensor, which should bring him to a stop. There we go. So now there's that delay, which is simulating him handing back the token before he requests the block. But he can't have the block until Percy gets back and Percy's just arriving now. So Percy will run over that sensor. And again, there's that slight delay before Percy hands back the token, then requests the block, and they've both been given the green signal. So off they go again to do part two of the automation. So again, Percy's on the slightly shorter run here and Percy tends to go a little bit quicker anyway. So it, we're expecting Percy to get back first. I really hope this is showing you how easy it is to implement some automation using the X-Rail feature in DCCX. And it can be used from the most basic of back and forth shuttles to far more complex automations involving multiple locos and blocks. You can also use it to control signals, point motors, lighting and other animations. And you don't have to use IR sensors, you could use current sensors, magnetic sensors or physical switches. So there's loads of flexibility there. But here comes Percy, back into the double track section. And just passing over the sensor now, so that's Percy come to a stop. And Thomas just passing back over the bridge. So he's taking his time because he's a bit of a slow coach. and he will be coming to a stop now. And that's the end of the automation. So there we go, a very brief demonstration of what's possible with X-Rail in DCCX. And I still need to tidy up all the wiring, but there's endless possibilities there. 
I'll try to put affiliate links uh, to all the bits of hardware I've used in the video down in the description, along with a link to the DCCX website, so please do go visit that. There's loads more information on there. Massive thanks again to the DCCX team for all their work developing this system for free, and special thanks to Kevin for all his help on Discord. That's about it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, then please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons for your support. It's very much appreciated and your names are up on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.